Hello, and welcome to Games Over Explained. Today we're going to be playing Going Medieval, which is a medieval-themed colony sim. I have heard some comparisons to games like RimWorld. Uh, however, I have not actually played RimWorld. What I have played is about 40 hours of this game, and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to go ahead and get started on a new game. This is the scenario selector, which allows you to choose uh, which scenario you want to play. Uh, survival has a ton of raids, peaceful has none, and standard is a happy medium, so we're going standard. There are some selections for starting conditions as well. I am going to be going with a new life, which starts you off with three guys uh, or ladies in the middle of spring and gives you all sorts of different equipment to start with, whereas lone wolf is much more difficult, starts you in winter with a single settler and very little equipment. This is the um, map selector and from here you can select a random seed to randomize the map that you're going to be playing on and then you can select which type of map type uh, valley is very flat lots of clay and dirt mountain is uh, very mountainous <laughs> lots of limestone and minerals we're going to go with hillside which is a nice happy medium between the two on a medium sized map from here we can randomize the name of our town I like this one. I can't even really pronounce it. <laughs> Why then Shaw, maybe? And uh, we're going to randomize this heraldry a few times and go with it. From here, it's going to generate our settlers, and we'll be able to randomize and re-roll them based on group skills. Right now, we're extremely heavy in culinary, so we're actually going to uh, re-roll some of these guys here, because what I really want to do is get good marksmen and melee and probably botany just for the purposes of uh, farming early on. All right, now we have our settlers locked in. Uh, I'm fairly happy with the way that these have rolled. I did get a major tailoring bonus, which really, really wasn't what I was going for, but that's all right. And we're going to roll with it. Uh, from here, you can actually see some background on these guys. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but their perks affect different things, such as how they react to environments, whether they're fast or slow, whether they're lazy, etc. So we are going to jump right in. Just kind of a quick little rundown on the scenario itself. It's got a lot of flavor text, makes it pretty, and kind of gets you immersed into the game. We're going to go ahead and click and continue. So as you can see from here, the game starts us out in a brand new map with resources strewn across the ground. Uh, from here, typically, what I like to do to start is first and foremost, allow all of these. Uh, when you see this little hand symbol over the items it means that they're not allowed to touch them or interact with them remove them anywhere so i am going to make sure that they are able to do that i'm also going to drop down a default stockpile that's just uh, the game's method for allowing you to organize different items uh, so when they collect new stuff they're going to dump it here you can customize these which you can use later in the game for now we just really need a place to put all of this junk so the first thing we're going to run through real quick is we're going to look at our jobs. Uh, as we know, Sinmund is an extremely gifted hunter. So we're going to set him to uh, two, which means it's his highest priority or high priority. From highest, I always like to set these guys to number one for convalesce. That way, if they're injured, they will go lay down and heal. Our best doctor also happens to be Sinmund. So we're going to give him a number two priority on tending as well. So these two will split the difference and go from left to right. So if somebody is hurt, he will tend to them first before he goes hunting. We're also going to go through and mark uh, some of these guys down. We're actually going to leave everything at a three, uh, but I do want to make sure, let's see, cut plants. We want to make sure somebody's skilled. So you're our best botany. We're going to give you botany tailoring we're not really going to need for a while because we won't have tailoring available to us but that's okay and i will go ahead and set noda to mining and then for our farmer we're going to set uh ada albert <laughs> at albert there we go at albert set to uh that as well since that is a baseline botany skill probably should go ahead and pause real quick while we're doing this and fiddling with the menus so we don't waste any time and then for somebody who isn't particularly going to be busy, we're going to set them to a two tier for hauling as well. From here, we can go in and set the schedule. This is the default schedule. I'm going to drop some work hours in here. We're going to do three, four, five, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten work hours for each of them. We are going to uh, assign a couple hours of leisure at the end of the day and one at the beginning of the day, and then I will copy and paste these across so they all have the same schedule for us to start with. From here, we're going to drop into the manage menu. This allows you to organize whether, uh, well, what kind of weapons they use, shields, if they have headgear, what kind of apparel, which comes in when seasons start changing. Uh, for now, we're going to just kind of look through these guys real quick. Noto was my marksman, so I want them to take the ranged. Oh, sorry. No, Noto is not our marksman. Sinmund was our marksman. Noda is going to be, let's see, who's our melee guy? Noda. Okay, so Moda, Noda is going to take the one-handed melee and the shield, and then I'm going to drop you with the melee too, because that's what we have available. And then I'll run through real quick and set everyone to grab whatever they can. That way we have appropriate armor. You can also manage food from here. We're not going to touch this right now, as well as stimulants for things like ale and herbs. And that should be everything that we need. So uh, to start with, we need to build a shelter. To do that, we're gonna come down here to the base menu, which you can also press F1 to do, and then select an, a, a, a type of material you wanna use. We're going to just be using wooden walls because I have a feeling we're gonna have lots of trees around to be able to play with. And so we're just gonna drop in a base shelter and the game will do the measurements for you. So I'm gonna do a nine by so that I can center the door. And we're just gonna do, let's just do nine by five. That should be plenty of space to start with for them. And actually, I said I was gonna do a door here, so let's go ahead and do that now because I have a habit of locking my settlers into places and I'd like to avoid doing that uh, in the immediate future. We're gonna drop a roof on here as well. It's a thatched roof and then we're gonna let them get going. Once they get going there, we're probably gonna need more hay, so I'm actually gonna come down here and select the harvest button and mark off this area so that they can start harvesting that as well as these mushrooms, because mushrooms are good to grab as well as these berries. That way we can have some food rolling and we don't have to worry about potentially running out. We're also going to do a little logging simply because I know that they're going to consume all of this wood pretty quick and I'd like to make sure that we don't have a place where we're just kind of sitting and waiting for them to get this work done. In the meantime, while they're working on that, uh, you can see over here we have piles of stuff that are forbidden on the ground. That is clay, which would allow you to build things like clay walls. And they're already done, <laughs> so that was quite fast. Um, probably because I have it on the fastest setting. Let's come up here and on the top left corner we're going to hide the roof elements that way I can see inside. Currently we don't have a floor down in here so let's get them started on that and they will get going. So yeah, uh, as I was saying, you can find various items in the world that are kind of pre-dropped. That's just an example with the clay. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna be able to find another one. Here's some bones. There you go, there's another one. <laughs> and bundle of sticks over there. Uh, those are just in game. You can have them, you know, come and collect them if you want. We're just gonna kind of leave them alone for now. And then we actually have a great resource of coal right here, which will come in handy down the line once we start getting some of our foraging and uh, smithing knocked out. So they've already got the floor in and it's almost nighttime. So I'm actually gonna slow it down a little bit and try to drop in these hay sleeping spots, rotate them with R and see if they will actually get that done in time, which they probably won't. They're probably gonna walk around and complain until they fall asleep. Oh, there we go. We got one done. Of course, they're unhappy because they don't have a place to sleep. Nobody wants to sleep on the floor. And settlers are idle because it is not quite bedtime yet, but I think they're going to start heading that way. Yep, there we go. Let this fast forward through and we'll get started on the next day here. All right, it is morning and now we are going to slow the game back down a little bit because as you see here, we have a prompt. We are missing meal preparation. To do that, we're gonna come down here to the bottom left to the production menu and drop in a campfire. Uh, this can pretty much be anywhere and it's only gonna be temporary. There are better ways to make food. However, this is what we have access to right now. So while they're getting ready to go work, uh, they are in leisure time which now, right now, which they don't really have any leisure to actually 
participate in, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start setting up some extra facilities. Uh, these guys are going to be mainly for the butchering table to get a nice little kitchen going in the research table. So we'll go ahead and drop this in, leave space for a door, and then we'll make an exact replica over here. Okay, we'll keep it nice and consistent. And go ahead and drop these roofs on, as well as the floors. And this is just setting aside some dedicated space um, and I will kind of go into the room system here in just a minute once I got these guys all built out. Okay, so uh, if you click on one of these beds, you'll see that they are inside a shared bedroom. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you come up here to the top left, you can show the overlay of rooms detected. There's a room system that requires specific items in order to fulfill the purpose of being whatever kind of room you're going for. In the instance of a shared bedroom, all we have to have is at least two wooden hay beds or hay sleeping spots in there and it cannot have other workstations. Uh, it does give a positive mood modifier. It's a small one. They prefer to have dedicated bedrooms, but for the time being, a shared space is probably for the best. Uh, these different rooms, there's, there's a bunch of them. I'm not gonna go through all of them, uh, but they all provide some sort of major bonus, so it's important to take a look at it and take care of those while you have the opportunity to do so, and uh, consider that in your planning while you're building your settlement. We are gonna need some more food here in the near future. So I'm gonna drop a harvest command over here on these berry bushes and get them started on that. And then they're just gonna keep building over here. So in the meantime there, we need to find a place to start building something a little more permanent in terms of the settlement. I like to build some of these little kind of short structures to start with just to give us a, a foot in the ground or a, a foot in the door, not in the ground. I'm already thinking about the next thing I'm gonna say here. <laughs> We're gonna build a uh, underground cellar. I like building underground cellars for the main reason of temperature control. Um, you can see if I click on maybe these berries over here that uh, the pile is going to decompose in four days. Why is it decomposing? Because of ground type and temperature and then it'll rot even sooner than that because of ground type and temperature. Not every item rots. Uh, I believe some of them only decompose. Yes, so like something static like a wood pile or I guess non-consumable in terms of food like a wood pile is just gonna decompose and not rot and uh, food will rot. The easiest solution to both of these problems is to just build an underground cellar for all of your food and then for the uh, static stuff, you just build a nice above ground storage facility and that will allow them to uh, simply just go through and see uh, where the the foods put so once once it's actually put in the uh, cellar you'll see what I mean it'll it'll help preserve it a lot longer I think it's pretty important to get this done early uh, and try to beat summer because summer is so hot that it typically starts destroying the food a lot faster in this early in the game, you really want to stay ahead of the uh, food crisis that is unfortunately inevitable. So we're going to have them do this digging here and get them started on that. And then I'm going to do a quick cut while they're working on some of this and uh, get back to you in just a minute. All right, so they've dug out this little trench here. Well, what is this trench going to be for? Uh, well, we're going to drop some stairs in here. Like I said, we're building an underground cellar. I like to build a cellar entrance first and then build a facility around it. I find that that's uh, the easiest way to make sure it actually looks pretty decent um, without having to uh, start taking measurements, and really get into the, the planning aspect. Uh, while we're waiting on that, I did say that we were building these guys over here uh, for a purpose. Those purposes are the butchering table, which we're gonna just drop over here for now, and the basic research table. The butchering table will allow them to take meat from hunted animals, which we haven't started doing yet, but we will. And uh, they can create meat and leather from those carcasses as well as bones. And that will provide us with food that could last a little longer than maybe relying on bushes and things of that nature. And then the basic research table we desperately need because that will unlock our research module up here. And then we can kind of go through that and see what that looks like. In the meantime, we've got 
Add Albert over here, dropping in our stairs. Excellent. And we're gonna drop a wooden floor panel down there. Uh, you don't have to, I just prefer the aesthetics of it. And then we are going to drop down a layer. Uh, to do that, you just have to control click on anything you want to target uh, for that same layer. So if I wanted to be on the same layer as this, I would just control and click. And now I am on the same layer. And see, you can see here that it's just a little too deep. Uh, so I am going to control back wheel, which will bring me up above. And then we actually need them to mine this section here for our next set of stairs. So we'll let them get started on that. And I do want a landing, so I will probably drop that one there. Ah, we've unlocked the research panel. Excellent. So let's come back up top real quick and do our uh, mouse back for the layers. So now you can see that our research table is done and we can create products from it. Currently, we can only do chronicles. There are three types of research and you see here it says research available. So we'll go into that real quick. There are chronicles, textbooks and thesis. Your chronicles are your very early game basic research. The textbook is a little more mid game and is required for some of your more advanced technology. And then your thesis is your end game stuff for the really big uh, projects that you can do down the line. The game starts you out with architecture, which will allow you to build wooden beams. So we're going to go ahead and just unlock that now. I also need to figure out, I want agriculture next, and I still have 10 available chronicles. So I just need to come over here, say, I want chronicles, five of them, please. And then when somebody uh, has some time, they'll come over and do it because I do not have a dedicated researcher yet. Let's see, who's our smartest person in the land? That is gonna be Sinmund. So I'm gonna bump that priority up to two. That way if he is not, let's see, hunting or tending, then he can come do some research and that'll be pretty important down the line. So we're still working over here on digging out my uh, cellar that we were talking about um, a minute ago. And it looks like they've gotten some clay. So we'll probably need to find a way to use some clay in the near future. There we go. And then we actually need to dig down one more layer. So I'm going to have them work on that. And then let's see. So Noda is doing research, which is not her job, but that's okay. As long as somebody's getting it taken care of, I guess. And they're about to go to sleep. So we'll probably have to do another cut uh, here in just a second. All right, they are back up in Adam. So today I'm expecting them to get in here and start dealing with this mining. Hopefully they don't get themselves trapped as they are often wanting to do. And we will see, uh, they're still working on our research books over here. So once we have settlers idle, hmm. Oh, I see what's happened. So they've mined out this first bit here and didn't get these guys. I have to do this sometimes and it drives me absolutely bonkers. You have to, and, and feel free if you know a better way of doing this, uh, please share. But they currently can't reach these guys, which is why they're not mining them. So I've had to do this before where you kind of walk them through it and say, here's how uh, I want you to build this. So let's see if we can convince somebody. I think Noda's coming over here to build this little bridge and then unfortunately we'll have to tell them okay excavate this one they'll come over here and excavate and then once they're done with that we have to point out okay now it's this one they are demanding leisure activities so we may want to go ahead and build another facility over here as a temporary setup to give them something to do what I'd really like to do is actually hold out until we can get a more permanent structure started over here, and then we'll get them those leisure activities. Currently, the only real leisure in this game is uh, worship, um, depending on what their religious affiliation is, and backgammon. So if you're a big fan of praying and playing backgammon, then this is a great game for you. <laughs> so let's see. 
I'm gonna work through this and uh, let you, I'll catch up with you guys here in just a little bit. Okay, so they finished excavating and building the stairs down. I did not, however, put down a wooden floor, but that is okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is drop down to this layer and I am going to have them start mining out this little pocket here. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Nope, please do not. <laughs> It was a little little too deep. Let's back that up just a little bit and see if we can convince them to just do this area here. Yeah, that looks correct. Okay. So now they should all start mining there. There is stability in this game. If you look in the bottom left corner, it says stability four currently. That's gonna drop, see here, stability three because we've taken out the support underneath it. And once they finish excavating this uh, I can show you a little more see here's stability too and the farther away you get from the last connected block which in this case it's connected to the stairs the more unstable it becomes so we don't want to build it out too too much uh, that's where the wooden beams come in and we'll kind of go over that here in just a minute but for now I want to actually go ahead and start building the walls of this place this is going to be Kind of our primary campus and we may have to do something with our stockpile here because i built this just a hair close oh i missed one okay so now we're gonna go ahead and have them start building the walls of this place uh, for the time being we want to keep it pretty simple and so i'm going to have them run it out here about 10. And then here we'll do, let's do 15 across. So that'd be 14. Actually, I lied because we need a little more than 10. Um, so we'll do 12 by 15. And of course, we're going to have to bring, oh no, we're actually clear on the, uh, on the sh uh, stockpile itself. So we should be good to go. Um, this coal will always be here. I know I'm building on top of it. However, I don't know that it's going to be a major, major issue, uh, as we'll probably be able to find more coal. See, we've already had some mushrooms rot on this stockpile. We are going to need more trees, uh, quite a bit of them, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and have them come over here and start taking down some of these trees so we can continue to build our little facility here. meantime I'm going to have them come over here and excavate this area as well back it up just a bit we want them to excavate we did three by four so let's emulate that on this side as well and have them get started there and that'll get our our stock room kind of started and that shouldn't be an issue for stability. We'll find out though. <laughs> Sometimes I don't always account for the uh, for the stability issues and it just collapses and it's like, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and uh, rebuild that. So while they're working on that, let's see, how are we looking on trees? Yeah, I think we're gonna need more trees than that. So I'm going to be proactive and try cutting these guys down as well. Of course, I'm not in the right layer, so let me make sure I'm catching all these. Yeah, okay, it's just not loading in. Oh, okay, so we have an event. It's a lone traveler. Oh, wow, this one doesn't even include... Oh, no, this is the new event. Sorry, sorry. I haven't actually seen this yet, so um, with the new trading and everything. Um, so this is kind of exciting. The merchant's on their way in to town and we'll see what they have to offer merchant has made it into town says their faction is the faithful sons of england i'm not actually 100 percent sure on how to interact with the merchant can i select a settler and right click on the merchant okay so let's take nota and have nota come barter and we'll see what happens Okay, so this is the merchant menu. I've seen it in some of the early um, screenshots that they had released for us to view. I don't know that I have a ton of stuff that I can actually barter with right now. 
um, mainly because we're just still trying to get started here. It would be good to buy some alcohol, but I really don't think I have the resources to spare. So I'm actually just gonna tell him, no thanks, we don't need your services today. Uh, really cool that we got to see that though. Uh, like I said, I, I personally have not actually seen that merchant interaction yet. So that was my first time as well. And let these guys keep building here. I need to actually drop in a wooden door so I don't forget that. And then we've got our cellar. Let's see how the cellar's going here. Excellent, okay, that looks great. And then we should be able to continue having them mine out just a bit more in the near future. So I'm gonna actually run this out there, but we don't have to wait for them to finish that. I can go ahead and drop in the wooden floors and then install the stockpile. And we'll get rid of our old stockpile and have them start building that. I'm thinking that we should be able to have them mine out this center bit as well, just to make our stockpile nice and big. And then we have a nice large facility to store all of our goods in. And we'll get started on that. Oh, we do have more research available as well. We need to be watching up here. We're gonna do our agriculture and agriculture will give us the opportunity to build farms. Um, here is not the greatest in the world simply because we have this coal vein running through here, but I'm thinking right here is actually a nice little area to farm. So to get farming going, we're just gonna come down here to our stockpile and you can select different types of food. I'm gonna start with cabbage uh, because cabbage is uh, fulfilling and really quick to grow. It grows in five days versus uh, flax growing in eight, carrots seven, beets nine, barley 14, herbs, etc. You guys get the point. It takes quite a long time to get all of that going. So we're going to stick with cabbage right now. And then I'm also going to have them start uh, planting some trees out here. We're just going to do that in a nine by nine. And that can be a low priority thing. Hopefully they don't get too distracted by it being out there. But if they do, we'll just recall it. I'm actually going to do another patch of cabbage here. And I'm just going to come down here and expand this zone. That's going to be five by five, so that should be lots and lots of cabbage for us. And eventually I can fence this off if I need to. There's not a huge benefit to fencing it off outside of keeping raiders and people of that sort out of it. Um, so I'm not too terribly concerned about it. They're still excavating down there. We'll have them start on the wooden floor up here. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was afraid of. You see here it's collapsed. Let me get rid of this overlay for you. Oh, I can't actually get rid of the overlay. Uh, but, oh, it's saying that I can't build over that because there's not enough stability. Well, that's okay. We can cancel these. I don't actually need flooring over these bits here. Let's see, that should still be correct. Yeah, let's take a look at what's going on down here. Okay, so I think we're still stable enough in all these areas that it's not gonna be a major issue. Let's see. Oh, I don't wanna select all the floor. Thank you though. Let's see if I can come down in the layer and get just this land here. Oh, it says it on the bottom left, duh. Yeah, so that is collapsing. We'll address that in a little bit. Um, we may have to maybe do a wooden beam across and then build a wall on top of it to support. Um, which won't be a major issue. We're just gonna have this big gap for now in the floor, <laughs> but we can fix that. So while they're working on that, I think this is probably a good time to let the game sim and let them get caught up a little bit. All right, so while I was waiting for them to finish building our big facility, uh, I got a prompt. And so it is telling me that Serdic who is a new villager is, or potentially a new villager, is trying to escape uh, some enraged philosophers. I guess he had beaten, they had beaten him for reductive reasoning. Ah, okay. So uh, what this gives you an opportunity to do is grow your settlement. At this time, this is the only way to grow your settlement. So uh, you kind of get an option here. Each of them have exclamation points next to them, which will let you know what might happen. If we just slam the door and tell the guy to get out of here, 
then it's going to give us a negative mood modifier, which isn't the greatest. Uh, and then here we can inspect Surtic and see what his abilities are. Uh, he's very passionate about smithing, which interests me. And he's a good animal handler, which isn't a huge benefit to us at this time. Worst case scenario, we might get attacked. One archer, two marauders. Mm, I'm gonna let Surtic leave. I think it's probably for the best right now. I don't, we're not in a position to defend ourselves, unfortunately, uh, because I'm taking too long letting them build this building. So it's probably for the best just to let him go on. Um, sorry, Surtic, we'll see you next time. So in the meantime, they've made quite a bit of progress. So let's take a look underneath while they're finishing up the flooring up top. Yeah, so this is looking good. Nice storehouse with a big open hole in the top of it, which is always nice. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down the floor here and then I'm actually gonna put our stockpile in. Later in the game, we are able to, whoops, uh, we are able to select, um, or we're able to research uh, shelving, which makes it much, much easier to store items. Uh, for now, we're just going to be using floor stockpile until we unlock that. And actually, I believe, is that part of furniture? Let's look. Well, bookshelves are part of furniture, which we'll want to start building our library in the near future. Uh, so we'll go ahead and order 15 books from our research table. And that will get them going there. And then in the meantime, once that flooring is down... Let's see. Yeah, they're working hard on getting that. So we should be good to go ahead and say, okay, we want to get rid of this stockpile and they should start collecting this stuff and moving it into our facility below. I'm not sure why they haven't destroyed these shrubs yet. Uh, might be a priority issue. <laughs> they're too busy planting trees over here. That's pro probably part of our issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually shrink this guy a little bit try and get rid of some of it uh, that way it's not as big we don't need as big of a, a home right now ah we don't have any food okay well let's have them harvest these berries again since we're still kind of living off the land here hopefully that'll be enough to get us by <laughs> this game's always fun because there's so much to do that I often get very distracted by all of the fun stuff going on um, and so I find that uh, I tend to forget sometimes that they're supposed to be doing other things besides just building. Uh, we can go ahead and order some meals um, once they have the resources to start making food. We should be able to get them started on that. So let's actually pop into our jobs menu real quick and see what we're looking like on preparing food. Okay, so here's cooking, and it looks like Albert is our big guy for cooking, so we're gonna bump him up in priority there and see if he can get us started on making food once we actually have food collected. They haven't started creating food. Let's see what they're busy doing. Planting trees. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of by putting these trees down. It's a little too much of a distraction, but they should be almost done so hopefully they'll make it let's see Ooh, yeah they are really 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 hungry let's see noda's going to harvest resources are you going to get us food awesome she's gonna eat it immediately <laughs> i don't blame her to be honest they are quite hungry, and I didn't do a very good job of making sure they had food available to them. So there goes those. And they should start moving our facilities underneath. It's very exciting indeed. All right. And they're going to make some actual food out of the berries that we've collected. Hopefully that'll tide us through uh, until our cabbage gets going. We only have two days left on the cabbage, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, I think this is 
probably a good place to leave it for now. We don't have a roof on here yet, but that's all right. We can take care of that in the next episode. Uh, but I do think this is a good place. We've got some food going. We have our underground storehouse done. We built some temporary structures while we're building our main home here. Uh, and we'll keep expanding on this in the future and eventually build a wall and hopefully get to the point where we can build a sweet castle. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, it really means a lot if you could leave a like, maybe a subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Uh, again, this is Games Over Explained, and we will see you next time.